and I and I think they appreciate uh, what we what we've done, and um, I, we everybody loves the script, and so and I think it started there. I think it started with the strong script, and the, to be honest, the script was never written for us to do ourselves. We wrote that script that's a spec script noir. It was a spec script that we were going to shop it around um, to the studio. And uh, our one of our, our producer saw the script, loved it, and thought, why don't we do it? And it yeah. took us a while before we were like, really? Well, yeah, because it's such a big project. Yeah. And it's it's a period piece, you know, once again, it involves horror and film noir. And but, I, I know that when we were pitching it around to people, though, you know, and once again, we realized that, well... It, nobody it, really wanted to do a period piece. Yeah. Nobody wanted to do film noir. Nobody wanted to do the stuff that we were interested in doing. And the first thing they would always say is, can't you update it? Yeah. Can't and, you update it? Can't you make it? Right, right. It? It's like all the things that, well, the whole reason why you make the movie in the first place is because yeah. of these elements. It's right? like they don't do movies like that anymore. <laughs> yeah. So we would kind of defeat the purpose to update it. So, and then when we kind of broke it down and realized that the, the uh, our character basically goes around interviewing people and then eventually there's weird things that are happening and we can shoot it here at the studio and we have the equipment and we have the green screen we just said why not let's go ahead so i think the core group of talented people got a hold of the script and they were amazed that we were doing it and i we had a really big casting call a lot of about like three four hundred people actors were buying to get a position and the yeah. ones that got picked we we were we weren't disappointed. We were well, very we were very fortunate. I think though that it's such a good idea, and I think like especially like in the UK where people are just watching films differently now. We've got films at the Royal Albert Hall with an orchestra, and that's become quite normal now. And sort of seeing films outside, like the old drive-through ones, I guess. You know, so I think maybe you know that's how people mm -hmm. want to view films now. Well, you know, I think I think you know. As the ticket prices now are getting much more expensive, I, you know, movies are becoming much more of an event, right? You yes. Know? Uh, or it should be more of an event because now everything is so readily available on Netflix and, and you know, Hulu and Amazon and things. Mm. And, you know, I mean, I, I know myself when I go on Netflix, I'm just inundated on, you know, so many movies. And honestly, a lot of them aren't very good, you know. And so it's just trying to, you know, navigate through all that crap out there that's yeah. out there. Right now. And I think that, you know, it's a good thing that we have technology the way it is now that it, it, it frees up people like us to make movies. But at the mm. same time, I wish there was a little bit more thought and effort in those films. And, and, at, the, and at, the, <laughs> but at, the, at the same time, I think what we're doing allows anybody that has an idea and, and want to do it to be able to do it you know don't let money get in the way because of you not, not, it hasn't with us. yeah don't let money get in the way to stop you from doing it because honestly we could have been sitting here waiting for the money and and we'd still be waiting okay and sometimes you just gotta go you know screw it i'm i'm gonna get a camera we can shoot on an iphone um i got a story to tell and you can upload stuff on YouTube and streaming servers all the yeah. time. There's more content now than has ever been before. Yeah. Um, and I think that's because people now are taking the initiative to, you know, creating their own um, content, their own story. Yeah. And, and in that aspect, I think that's great. Yeah, absolutely. But, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think, I think also, and once again, I wish there was just more thought in the storytelling itself. And I think that that is the one thing that kind of gets kind of bypassed, unfortunately, with big films and small films. You know, it's like, uh, you know, it, it, it's like, well, we got the equipment, we can shoot it on a red camera or whatever. And, and sometimes the technical stuff gets in the way, you know, it's like, oh, it looks beautiful. I mean, the cinematographer did a great job and, and, uh, and, you know, the actors are, you know, sometimes, you know, pretty good, but if, when you look at the story itself or the, you know, the, the dialogue, you're going, oh, my God, you know, it's just not working. None of that's working. So um, I think, uh, if anything, there's this needs to be more time spent on trying to create a really, you know, good, strong, powerful story yeah. with good characters that people are going to be engaged in and, and hopefully, you know, can do something a little bit unique. Yeah. Also. I can't wait to see your film. After seeing we all of it. We can see it. We can't I can't wait. wait. Either. I just hope I can. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I mean, uh, 
and, and, and the event, you know, I mean, it, it, you know, it, it's, it's kind of almost silly to even think that you can do an event film or, you know, epic kind of a piece on the kind of a budget we're talking about because it really is, I mean, we're technically using our, our, our own cash on this thing. So, uh, but, you know, we're pulling in a lot of favors uh, and a lot of the things we're trying to do, we're just trying to be very creative about it. Yeah, uh, you know, well, like with the miniatures, you know, I mean, I'm a huge Ray Harryhausen fan, you know, and I love those old, you know, those old Sinbad films and mm. and, and those, those movies like that, and and I think that's kind of the part of the, the joy of it. So I yeah. think that if we can harken back to that and kind of capture some of that magic, you know, I think uh, you know, not only will it be a, a unique film, and hopefully it's contemporary enough that a contemporary audience will like it and enjoy yeah. it as well, but you know, people like us that remember those old movies will also kind of have a, a bit of a nostalgia going, oh, that's awesome, that's cool. Yeah. I remember when they used to do movies like that all the time. You know? Yeah. Oh, wonderful. And ha what will you go on to then, do you think, after this? What's next? Well, we, got, we have got well, a library of scripts. We got a library of scripts. <laughs> I mean, we got a lot of scripts that we can go to. Um, um, we got a couple of minds that we would like to do after this. Um um, but you know, right now our mindset is just to finish this one up and get this um, um, shopped and set up and stuff. And we're pretty yeah. close to being it. Pretty close yeah. to being done. Yeah, we yeah. we also have a documentary that we 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 were shooting documentaries for the last couple of years, and we have a documentary that we'll probably be coming out rolling out with pretty soon called "Tough Ain't Enough" uh, with Albert S. Ruddy, who was the producer of The Godfather uh, and Million Dollar, Million Dollar Baby. Baby. Uh, and he's one of those guys that, you know, he, he's such an interesting character just to sit and talk with. And that's kind of what it was. It was just a conversation with Albert S. Ruddy. And he's so fun and he has so many awesome stories yeah. of how he got into the business and some of the challenges he had making The Godfather and these other films that it's just a fun ride. And yeah. it's, it's one of those things that as film lovers, you know, we thought it was just like the greatest. You that's know, amazing, isn't ever. it? Yeah. yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, <laughs> that uh, that'll probably come out um, very soon. So we're 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 get, we're in the midst of getting that um, distributed. So you'll probably yeah. see that. I've got to see street. that as well. I, that's right up oh, my yeah. street. I've got to see that. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, we, we 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 might be able to uh, send you a link so you can see that. Uh, I'd love that, to. That, I, yeah. Yeah, I'd love to. Oh my gosh! Well, I don't know what time it is. Yeah, we've been about half an hour. So thank you for your time. I didn't want to take up too much of your time. So No, nah, we feel I mean you you've been up all day. See, you're about ready to end your day and We're get some out. sleep. We're just starting out over here. So. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, I've had it's about a weird kind of opposite end of the spectrum. You know? I know, I've, I've had, had about two pints of tea. One of our most recent scripts that we wrote is called Don't Blame London because oh. we love London so much and we love the UK so you so do. That, that could be our next film, maybe. Who knows? Yeah. It's like a, like a James <laughs> Bond kind of thing, you know? Oh, yes. That's uh, big in the news it. at the moment, isn't it?